Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to MongoDB series. Now, let's move forward and in this video we are going to discuss about relations. Relations is something which provides you some linkage between the two documents that you are creating. So far in the course we have created a database just by the command use and then the database name and then inside the database we are creating number of documents. It can be like users, courses or whatever we want to create. So in so far we have been just working on one document and definitely that's usually not the case. You have multiple documents inside a database. Now these documents also need to take uh, kind of interact with each other so that one can pass on the information of another and whole lot of stuff. So we're going to discuss about how this actually happens because this is almost like a real time approach how database actually works. So let's talk about this relation. Now one thing more, a side note I would like to give you that a lot of people say that hey try to use more one to one relation. Some people say hey try to use more one to many relation. I'm not with both of them. I'm simply going to say do whatever your application needs and in fact I'm going to present you with the scenarios where you're going to say hey this makes sense here and again this also makes sense here. So we will be diving in those examples in the next video and after that video as well. So let's first talk about in general relation. This video is not about one to one or one to many or any other kind of that. In basic we want to first understand how relation works and uh, how we can take that with the example stuff. So let's get started and talk about this MongoDB. And by the way, in case you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you know what to do. So let's get started. Okay, so what is relation? Relation is a way in which your one document interacts with another document. Remember, I'm saying document, not the database, okay? So one document interacts with another document. So let's go ahead and talk about this very first example here. Let's just say this is a, a user's uh, document and we are having email which is one property inside it another property is is verified to be true and then we have a, uh, a simple uh, property here which says courses and courses is actually an object and inside this we are having number of courses assigned let's just say react native uh, java or maybe android okay so three courses are applied here now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, this is definitely a good idea because whenever we fetch the user's information, we are able to fetch how many courses he has enrolled, what's his email, is verified true, or maybe a couple of other information as well. Yes, in that particular scenario, it's pretty amazing. But what is going to happen in that case, uh, let's just say later on I decided that I'm not going to call my Android P course Android P because it's now updated to Android Q and uh, I am providing free updates in that so I'm going to call it Android Q let's just say for example and also I'm not going to call my course react native as react native I'm going to call it as react native bootcamp okay so you have done the two updates in the course itself now comes up the problem this kind of relation is amazing if you have just one user here in this particular case but it's going to be absolutely horrific and, tr and terrifying in case you have a hundred users or probably a thousand users or probably more than that in that particular case what is going to happen you have to fetch each and individual data and you have to update the course name in each and every document or entry that you are making in this database not at all an ideal approach but definitely there are some situations where this approach actually makes much more sense so we're going to talk about that now another approach of the database is that let's just say we save this information in multiple documents. The first document actually says that we're going to have email as whatever the email is. Then we have all the information is verified, mobile number, street address, whatever we are asking for the user. And then we have a courses document as well, object. And inside that we just pass on another. Here also we were passing on array, but here we were passing on actual name of the course itself. Here we are passing just on IDs. So these IDs definitely are unique for that. So first green box is users and then we have another green box which is for courses. Each course is definitely going to have a unique ID because that's how we are referring it or having a relation between one document and another document. And whenever we call ID 1, let's just assume we are giving this ID and we're calling it as React Native course. Now this in particular the situation which I have given you is much more making sense because whenever I say that hey I don't want to call it React Native course I want to call it as React Native Bootcamp means the same but uh, I just wanted to change it. So what is going to happen in this case since this is being fetched on the runtime by ID 1 that means 
whatever the name, description, tags, photos, whatever you want to do, you can do that. You're free in that case. So yes, definitely in this case, if we want to display the user's information and want to edit that, the second approach makes sense. But in fact, there are many situations in which the first one actually makes sense. So it's not about one is good, one is bad. It's all about what is your use case scenario? What is the demand of your application? So there we go. Now the little bit idea is clear about what relation is. Now we can move on, move on to our terminal and we will be creating both of these situations that how we can work on with the situation one and then we're gonna work on situation two. We'll give you a separate example. Of course, I'm gonna include uh, YouTube videos and courses on that because this is how I connect more better uh, in a better way with you. So that's it for this video. I hope you are enjoying this. Now that this is all clear up, let's move on to the next video, fire up the terminal and I'm gonna give you some assignments as well. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.